How did you get introduced to Forex? One Cambridge? of my Neos, okay, I'm a Delta, I pledge Delta at this moment. So that's like, like a girl that pledges under me. And so one of my Neos, she bought a house, well, she was buying a house at 23. I was like, girl, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Run that back real quick, tell me what, what you're you doing. What? And then she told me she was doing Forex and I just started researching, researching, researching. But of course it's not like the Forex that people see. It's not a company, I'm not affiliated with a company, I'm a completely independent investor. A lot of people think Forex is a scam. Mm -hmm. They have a very negative perception of Forex. Why is that? Because the network marketing companies. Network Period marketing. Point blank. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. This episode is sponsored by Greenwood. All right, guys, welcome back, EYL. This is a follow-up from the legendary Invest Fest. Yeah, yeah. That we had. So you know, we had a star-studded lineup at Invest Fest, and uh, one of the people that was gracious enough to be a part of Invest Fest was Jessica Lane. Jessica is somebody that we know. New slogan for her. What's that? You want to say it? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Lane. Remember the face. Remember the name. Period. With a T. That's a fact. Don't play around with us. Yeah. So, Don't play with us. Yeah. We, we, uh, we connected a while ago. I think Jason, Mr. Two Weeks Out. Shout out to the, yeah, shout out to Mr. Two Weeks Out. The person yeah. that introduced us, I believe, originally. Um, but long story short, Jessica hosted a dope panel for us on building investment uh, platforms. Yeah. And it was really dope. And part of that panel was, you know, of course, Mike Sim, shout out to him, who's hedge fund manager in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, he specializes in Forex. So Jessica actually has known Mike for a long time, and she actually is a Forex investor herself. And uh, this is a conversation we've been having for a long time. We did one episode on Forex before, shout out to Justin, but it's not when you look at like Market Mondays, if you talk about stocks every week and crypto, we've been talking about crypto a lot also. Um, you know, one episode out of a hundred uh, that we've had from <laughs> when you combine Market Mondays and Earn Your Leisure, a lot of people just felt that it just wasn't enough just to cover the wide variety of different strategies and just, you know, the depth of it. So yeah. we always can spin the block back and um, <laughs> cover a topic again. So, and it's dope to have a female perspective. Yeah, so I mean, having a woman investor is powerful. Yeah, yeah, so she's she's been killing the game. Like I said, she was on Invest Fest stage in front of four thousand people. Killed that. Thank you for that. Um, Absolutely. So we're gonna have a dope conversation about her journey, forex trading, how people have misconceptions about forex, how you can make money on forex, um, and a variety of other different things. So first and foremost, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely for sure. Invest Fest was amazing. Yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Shade in Atlanta. You're from Atlanta, right? Yeah, born and raised. What Decatur. Part? Decatur. Mm -hmm. Decatur was greater. Decatur was greater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent my whole life in Atlanta. Then I graduated from Spelman. Like I've been in Atlanta. Okay. The whole life. You the whole Atlanta through, yeah. through and through. Shout out to Atlanta. That's like our second home. Uh, we got so much love out in Atlanta. So many people. So many connections out there. So all right, let's let's talk about this. So you have a unique journey. Mm -hmm. because you're an investor, but you started as an athlete. And not, you know, when you think of women that's athletes, of course, WNBA basketball, track and field, really big, um, gymnastics, things like that. But you were a boxer. <laughs> and I heard you almost made it to the Olympics, something like that? Yeah, I was 2016, training. right? Yeah, I was, I was training for the Olympic trials. I lost in the semifinals at the Olympic trials, you know what I'm saying? But... The Olympics and boxing, that journey taught me all of my discipline that I need in investing. So when, how did you get yeah. into boxing? I'm interested in that. <laughs> how, how, how do we get to, cause, I mean, did, did you do track and field too? No. No track and field? No, okay. I played basketball my whole life, like when I was younger. Yeah. My dad and my mom played basketball, so I was like a basketball baby, but I always wanted to box. I was obsessed with Layla Lee, and I asked uh, them in sixth grade, could I box? They said no. So then when I literally got a job in high school, I got a job just so I can pay for boxing. So I started at like, I would say 15, 16-ish, mm -hmm. and then I literally just paid for my boxing lessons, and that was it. And then I started doing it every single day, and then I started sparring, and I was good at it. My trainer was like, "You." the first time I sparred, I gave this girl, like I made her nose bleed, right? Mm. He was like... You want to do this for real? I was like, yeah, I want to do it for real. <laughs> and then he just started, like, we just started traveling. 
on the road, going to fights and stuff like that. And then I just started doing um, national fights. Yeah. And then that led into me training for the Olympics. And then that journey, it was just such a... Women in boxing is not really a good thing for me because I'm not a girl that is boyish. So for me, trainers, like, trying to hit on you, all this stuff, it was just a very toxic, Uh like, space because... Most boxers, you see the glitz and glamour of people on TV. It's not like that when you're training, especially like for the Olympics, like you in the trenches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got a whole bunch of, it, it was just, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. I, I mean, I think people, the misconception, when they see you, they see glamour, yeah. a beautiful woman. But she was knocking people out. For sure. Uh, how, how, you, you, knocked, you knocked somebody out before? I knocked somebody out in sparring. Okay. 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 Not in a real life match. Of course, in real matches, you have like headgear and stuff like that. Your gloves are padded. Like there's USA regulations. There's mm-hmm. no way of getting around that. And you have to do the Olympics before you're able to go pro. I didn't want to go pro in boxing just because one, women don't make a lot of money being pro. Like it's not like the WNBA. Well, WNBA women don't even make a lot of money compared to men. Mm-hmm. But I have friends that are pro boxers right now. They make 3000 4000 5000 um, a fight and stuff like that. There are some women that make like 100000 but it's still not compared compared to I have a friend okay that is a male boxer he literally made like three million his last fight mm. you know what I'm saying so it's like yeah it's, it's yeah. tough I, I'm thinking about it now I don't really even on like undercards do, how does that work do they put female fights on male undercards or is it just like this? sometimes they, it, they, just they, depends. They it just depends but it's not even really promoted like that and shout out to like I have a lot of great friends you know what I'm saying that are women boxers Tierra Brown you know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot, but okay. Yeah. So all right, so that doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. What happened? You got injured? No, just, I just decided the Olympic trials didn't work out. I was like, that's not the life for me okay. because I knew I didn't want to go pro after the Olympics for women. It's like, what's next? There mm-hmm. isn't anything next. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not for me. Like Cla- Clarissa Shield is the one that paved the way for women's boxers, and then you have like Raquel Miller. They're like amazing women fighters, but for me. I'm like, okay, I got to get to the bag now because it's a very broke grind. Yeah, Give me the time frame now. Are we in school and training and doing this? I was training for Olympics the whole time I was in college. So I didn't even have a college life. And then I was like fighting, fighting, fighting. I would say I graduated 2014. So yeah, from 20, I would say 2013-ish to 2016 was the fighting years. Okay, got you. All right, now I got it. And before that was just straight training. So- Okay, so how did you get introduced to Forex? How did you? Make um, that one of my neos. Okay, I'm a Delta. I play Delta S moment. So one of my neos, she bought a house. Well, she was buying a house at 23. And I was like, girl, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Run that back real quick. Tell me What's what you're ne- doing. Neo, well, that's like the sister. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like so that's, that's like, like a, a girl that pledges under me. Okay. So she bought a house at 23. I was like, wait, what? How? How? And then she told me she was doing forex, and I just started researching, researching, researching. But of course, it's not like the forex that people see. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not the forex <laughs> that people see. It's not a company. I'm not affiliated with a company. I'm a completely independent investor. So, all right. So, well, let's talk about this. A lot of people think forex is a scam. Mm-hmm. They have a very negative perception of forex. Um, why is that? Why is that? Because they're network marketing companies. Network Period marketing. Point blank. So you're like, not a fan of network no. marketing companies? Well, so this is the thing. I have no problem with network marketing companies with a business module, depending on if it's like, if it's Herbalife and you're selling a protein drink for somebody to get in shape, okay, it's helping that person. But mm-hmm. when it comes to Forex, a lot of people are like, hey, look at my lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Sign up. Join me. You'll have this lifestyle. You'll have all these cars. You'll have these houses, all this stuff. But they're not making their money from trading. They're making their money from recruiting people. So then you have a whole wave of people that's like, earn while you learn. Once you join this, I'm going to teach you. But they don't ever teach you. Because the thing is, is if they taught you, ultimately, you don't need the company because you're making your money through trading. Makes sense. I mean, I feel like over the past five to ten years, that's what it was. Like, I got invited to a bunch of meetings where it was like, we want to teach you something. I'm like, yeah, yeah stop. <laughs> like, stop. I know what y'all trying to do. And I feel like it hit our community hard. Yeah, Like, for kids sure. were just like, I can make money, I can make money. It's fast money, it's fast money, but it's not. It's hard. So when you got into the to, to the Forex app, like, 
game, not even game, but investing in Forex, mm -hmm. what's the first thing you, you, you looked into to study? What was so, it? So I needed to learn about the economy. Actually, the girl that I told you that was 23 years old, she was actually a part of one of those companies. And then I was like, oh, no, this is not what I want to do. I need to learn the right way. I mm -hmm. spent like over $21,000 to learn how to trade um, through this guy. He like has this hedge fund. He was this amazing investor. But the thing is, is that people don't realize the foreign exchange market has been around for years upon years. It's just now coming on the map right now because of these network marketing companies. And it's not even just one. There are tons of network mm -hmm. marketing companies out there that promote, hey, learn how to trade. It's the systems and it's the, the robots that is like, oh, put your money here and let it automatically trade for you and everybody lose the money. And they're like, oh, I hate Forex. No, Forex is just like anything else. Just like if you decided right now that you want to go, you know what I'm saying, be a doctor, you're not going to go in on the eighth floor at a, at a hospital and say, hey, I'm going to perform surgery. No, the, you have to actually go to medical school and get your credentials to actually perform that task. It's the exact same in Forex. So, so you, you have to learn the skill set. You got your guidance from a hedge fund manager. Mm -hmm. Where'd you find them? Because that's not like you don't walk down the street and say like, oh, hey, what do, what do you do? Right. And 21,000 kudos to you for investing in yourself. Obviously, you learned a skill that you have for your lifetime. Yeah. But that's not an easy task at the age. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I'm, you're fresh out of college. right? Yeah, so at this time, what, 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 what's that like? And, and where'd you find the hedge fund manager? OK, so so let me back up. OK, because I did pay for a course first. And mm -hmm. then, of course, I lost a lot of money. It wasn't the course that I should have paid for. Then I paid for another course. <laughs> so over the last course that I paid for, he was 15,000. Honestly, I found him by the grace of God. Everything in my life is by the grace of God. He just lead me to the people that I need to have mm -hmm. and so with that that was 15,000 so it's 15,000 on top of 6,000 so that yeah, of course it's the 21,000 okay so let me ask you this let's let's uh -huh. get into this conversation um we talk about stocks a lot we have uh -huh. a stock show called market monday shout uh -huh. out to Ian. end not heard of it um <laughs> <laughs> is there a correlation between forex and stocks absolutely what, what absolutely. is the correlation it said well okay so think about it like this in stocks people are investing in companies all right to make their money. You're you're literally researching companies. So you're looking at corporate earnings, you're looking at a company's debt, you're looking at all these different things to decide whether or not you, that company is good to invest in. In Forex, we're looking at different economies. That is telling us whether or not that economy is a good economy to invest in. So let's take um, gross domestic product, for instance, right? So GDP. In stocks, you guys look at GDP in regards to sectors. So let's say there is a lot of imports coming from China, and let's say it, that's going to benefit the tech sector. So you guys are looking at tech sectors. In the foreign exchange market, we look at imports and exports because that tells us the overall health of the economy. So if we have a lot of imports coming in, that's telling us that, okay, consumer spending is there. If we have consumer spending, then that means that our economy ultimately is good at that point. So ultimately, the U.S. dollar goes up. So everything inverse to the U.S. dollar, we sell. Everything with the U.S. dollar as the base, we buy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I think I get that. So if I'm looking for the GDP, right, like I'm a beginner, mm -hmm. where am I going to find the GDP? I, I mean, obviously, I know in stocks, is we, mm -hmm. we know to go, but... What is somebody in the Forex space? Where are they going? A lot of people look at Forex Factory. That's one. I look at Market Watch for a lot of stuff. I watch Bloomberg like literally nonstop. And <laughs> like, and then, you know, Blo Bloomberg is 24 hours if you got the subscription. So I literally watch it and okay. I trade London Session a lot. So London Session is a session in Forex. You have different sessions. Yeah. So depending on what session you're choosing to partake in. And I mean... It's just like stocks. Like the news comes out, you understand what that news is and you apply it. This past Friday, we had non-farm payroll. The expected number was 700. It came in as 200. Literally, that's going to cause the U.S. dollar to drop. You see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of correlation. Just as, it's just how we apply it is a little bit different. Can we talk about sessions real quick? Yeah. Because I, I, uh, we've had conversations with people who trade Forex. Not, I mean, just in passing. And that's something that gets overlooked, but like trading, getting up at two o'clock to trade mm -hmm. and going to sleep, you know what I mean, during the day mm -hmm. so you can trade at night. Mm -hmm. I even had a, um, a young man, child out to Ronnie Brown. She was telling about her, her son. He was, he was, uh, had to get to school by seven. So he was like, mom, I, I probably can trade a, a, a different, a different sector during my lunchtime. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wait, this kid's really getting it. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for, for, of course. So you have different sessions. You have the most prominent sessions that people trade is London session and New York sessions. It's just liquidity that pumps through the market depending on what's happening in their economy. 
our session opens at 8 a.m. in regards to our particular New York session trading time. Mm -hmm. We're trading at 8 a.m. Like, I know, like, when it comes to um, stocks or whatever the case may be, I know that you guys have the opening bell at 9.30. But ours, we look at 8 a.m. as our market open for the New York session for for it. Hey, earners. Did you know that the black community has $2.7 trillion of spending power? Are you ready to see what you can do when you combine and recirculate our resources to expand the pool of black excellence? I know I'm ready. And that's why we've partnered with Greenwood, the in-demand black-owned digital banking platform. Greenwood's namesake was founded in 1906, built from the brilliance of black dreamers looking to create a self-sufficient community in the Greenwood district of Tulsa, Oklahoma, a.k.a. Black Wall Street. Today, Greenwood is a digital banking platform with the mission to strengthen the black dollar using the same community reinvestment strategies of the original Greenwood district. And it's powered by a best-in-class mobile app that allows you to bank from anywhere. So, earners... If you're ready to build a new legacy of black economic achievement, go to bankgreenwood.com slash EYL and sign up to be a part of the new Greenwood community. That's bankgreenwood.com slash EYL. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over there now. Okay. So those are the two most popular. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most popular. And then, of course, you have New Zealand session. Well, ultimately, you have New Zealand session. You have Australian session. All of these sessions are correlate they're back to back so the sydney session is new zealand and australia together then you have the tokyo session and then you have that flows into london session and then that flows into new york session so somebody could just be doing this all day yeah they chose to yeah Yeah, they chose to but you you choose your favorite pairs like just like stocks you're not investing in everything right in forex we're not well granted some people probably do Mm -hmm. Real good traders have their favorite pairs that they trade. So what I trade primarily, I trade Great British Pound versus U.S. Dollar. I trade Great British Pound versus Japanese Yen. I trade Euro USD because I like those pairs. They have the most so, volatility, the most liquidity. So let's back it up a little bit for anybody uh-huh. that might not be familiar with a pair. So a pair is you got one country's currency versus another country's currency, right? Absolutely. So the British Pound versus the U.S. Dollar, Yep. right? You put the trade in and you're... For lack of a better word, you're betting on the British pound for the day. If the British pound outpaces the U.S. dollar for the day, then you win. If it doesn't outpace it, you lose. So I don't want to say bet because it's actual substantial fundamental data that is aligned to tell you what actual currency is going to do. So I don't really look at it. Well, not I. Like I said, lack of a better word. But you kind of, you're, 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 you're placing right your judgment on so that, friday right? so actually let's take it back to invest fest okay let's do it. so in the invest fest the day before invest fest well actually the whole weekend of invest fest literally starting the 27th mm-hmm. okay was jackson hole symposium all right so that's literally where the fed is deciding whether or not they want to taper off inflation okay so in that if the feds decide that they're not going to taper off inflation, that caused our whole U.S. dollar to drop because ultimately what's that saying? The feds been beating around the bush for that forever, mm-hmm. right? So if the feds are deciding they're not going to taper off inflation, our U.S. dollar drops, which means that day, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, spoke at 8.30 a.m. that morning. Mm-hmm. That Friday morning, I bought GBP USD because I knew the U.S. dollar was going to tank, okay? So GBP is the base. U.S. dollar is the quote. Basically, I'm saying that the U.S. dollar is going to be weaker than the Great British Pound at that time. So I buy GBP USD. I sold USD CAD. That was another pair that I traded that day because it, it was just amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> it was just an amazing day. I, I <laughs> and then a lot of people don't know this. And for us, we use a platform or a trading platform called MetaTrader 4. Okay. So literally, we place trades on gold as well, even though gold is a commodity, but we trade it as a pair in for it. So it's gold versus the US dollar. So also, I bought gold that morning. Okay. I wish I could show you all these charts on TradingView because it just. It was beautiful. So fundamentally, and this is the thing about Forex, our fundamentals always line up with our technicals, right? So technically, I had divergence all day long on the DXY. The DXY is literally the dollar index. So I knew, okay, one, 
I was at a level of resistance. I literally was at this. Re- I use Fibonacci a lot. Oh, so I was so in you, the- I'm listening to you now. I'm like, all right, I'm hearing the stock terms, right? So you're talking about support and resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you, So I was at a going- heavy level of resistance. Okay, okay, got you, got you. I was at a negative 61.8 on my fib level, which is my reversal level in regards to my currencies. Okay. I also had divergence. Divergence is basically where the RSI is doing something opposite of price. Relative strength index. Okay, yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm not getting too technical. I got you. I got, you. Yes. I got you. So they were doing two opposites. So technically, I literally had three confluences. Confluences is multiple things that add up to give you a confirmation on your trade. So you're looking for those are your signals. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So like so, if the, the, the relative strength, right? That just means how many people are buying and it's selling. A, it's a check mark. And you got your check. Okay. Once got I you. got all my checks on the list, all of these technicals line up. And then I got this fundamental data to give me why this is happening. Yeah. Oh, I'm going all in. This is what Ian would say, like, load the boat. Yes, because <laughs> you know you know what's going to happen. Yeah. If you know what's going to happen. And not only that, I mean, ultimately, I'm the type of person, I really do feel as though, like, technicals and fundamentals. Some people say, oh, you only need technicals. Some yeah. people say, oh, you can only trade fundamentals. I'm very big on entries. Like, they call me the entry queen in Forex. So, I'm very big on entries. I think that you should have the best entry possible. Right. Because, of course, the whole goal is to buy low, sell high. You don't want to literally have a whole bunch of drawdown in your trades. Like you want to come in with the best entry possible so you can leverage the most amount of money to make the most amount of profit on your trades. What other platforms can you trade on? Is that I mean, I just use MetaTrader. MetaTrader. Are there other ones, other brokerages that you can use? So you have different brokers that you can use. Okay. But MetaTrader 4 is the platform. There are tons of brokers that you can use in the foreign exchange market because technically a lot of them, like they're offshore brokers. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying. But then so, there's fees with that, right? I'm assuming. Yeah, but it's fees with everything. Yeah, I'm saying, but yeah. if you're doing it yourself. Yeah, okay. of course. Yeah. But it, it's 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 literally a whole list of brokers. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I see, I use LCMFS. Some people use Hugo's Way. Some people use KOT for us. There are tons of brokers you can use. So okay. As far as entry, since you spoke about that, mm-hmm. what are, how do you determine there's a good entry point? It, use it, technical analysis, candlesticks? Yeah. No, I use technical analysis for all of my entries. Okay. My my technicals always tell me, okay, this is about to happen. Then my fundamentals is like I could foresee the future that something either good or bad is going to happen based off of how my technicals are lining up, right? So if I'm at a heavy level of support, like this, every Sunday I mark up the market for like, literally all my mentees around the world, right? I literally tell them everything that's going to happen every week. Mm-hmm. It always happens. You know what I'm saying? So in regards to my entries, what I'll do, I'll wait for a break and retest. You know what I'm saying? Structure always tells you. So like you said, candlesticks, but of course it's not just, well, in, in forest, it's not just candlesticks. I'm literally looking to see what price is doing. So of course you could tell if, it, if it's a lot of volume in the market or whatever cases like maybe are happening. But again, Divergence is one of my main ones. I don't really use indicators on my chart, but the only one I do use is RSI, and it's only to determine divergence. Once I see divergence, and then I use FIBs for everything also, so I understand each FIB level. Each FIB level I have a meaning for. So a lot of people be like, oh, 61.8 is the golden ratio, and that's the only one. No, all of them matter. Mm -hmm. All of them have a meaning. So if I understand that I'm at my 38.2, I know price is about to be aggressive at this point. So I understand like how I'm going to carry this trade to the next take profit level okay okay so i mean in, in trading and we always talk about it we're not we don't want to invest in a bunch of companies and you mm-hmm. said that you do two pairs um and the reason we tell people not to invest in so many companies is it's, it's tough to mm-hmm. research and study mm-hmm. and get technicals mm-hmm. and fundamentals for all these companies what does that look like for you on a daily basis how much time are you spending on the technicals and fundamentals before you may because like you said you, you're you're giving information to a lot of people Mm -hmm. what's the time that you're putting in to do that so my students know so for the masses i mark up five pairs because they all know like y'all not about to throw me off my game (laughs) because at the end of the day i'm giving y'all money Mm. ultimately so i refuse to look at everything because i mean you know the whole saying jack of all trades master of none you need to really know what's going on in these economies if you're going to trade them Mm -hmm. i know everything going on in the u.s economy i know everything going on japanese economy i know everything going on in the london economy and great british pound because those are pairs that i trade you see what i'm saying so 
I mean, really, that's it. So let's have a conversation about the UK. You say you, you study the UK a lot because mm-hmm. we have a lot of listeners in London and in the UK. Mm-hmm. So um, what is something that, you know, you study that you notice in their economy that might be a little different from American economy? So a lot of our stuff is very, 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 very correlated because it's such a strong economy. Like when you're looking at strengths of economies, you're looking at how strong that economy is compared to other economies. So you have some countries that are very, very big on imports and you have a lot of countries that are very, very big on exports. Okay. So like London, just like the United States is very, very big on imports. Okay. So their import driven economies. You have some countries that will literally devalue their currency. Okay. Mm-hmm. I hope this makes sense. But some countries, no, I hope no, I'm not going too no, deep because I, I, I don't want to go too deep, but some countries devalue their currency to combat trade imbalance. Um, okay? Japan. Japan does that, right? Yes. Exactly. Okay. I just made a video on this, but yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> because it's true. Like, so, so basically Japan is, Ooh, I'm going to explain it like this. Cause I feel like tech key people will understand this in stocks. So let's say Japan produces, let's say, uh, what's something pe- people like, like playstations or something like that. Let's okay. say they say, okay, it's going to take a thousand dollars to manufacture this product. All right. Mm-hmm. So ultimately if it's going to take a thousand dollars to manufacture this product, I want to keep my currency weaker than these other economies because I understand supply and demand. And because I understand supply and demand, I want to make sure that that my the value of what it costs to produce this product, right, mm-hmm. is not going to cost me a lot because ultimately if if I make my currency stronger than the US dollar or make my currency stronger than the Great British pound, that's going to cost me more to do my my exports does that make sense Mm -hmm. okay perfect and great i hope (laughs) i'm happy it does because sometimes i'll be trying to make sure i ain't going over people's head i mean not jaws but i'm talking about the audience yeah if you're if you're exporting it's more it's better to have a weaker dollar if you're importing it's better to have a stronger dollar exactly absolutely um okay so how right so you're doing pairings mainly on what are those three pairings that you're doing again? So GBP USD. What's GB? What's Great, Great British, British pound, pound. Okay. versus the US dollar. Okay. Great British pound versus the Japanese yen and euros versus the US dollar. That, and that's it? Mostly. Okay. And I, But because I have so many students worldwide, I also mark up USD CAD because I have a lot of students in Canada also. And so... And that's what I mean by, by fundamentals are always aligned. If you know it's a, a strike on an oil refinery, you already know what's going to happen with USD CAD. The Canadian dollar is going to get weak. That means everything inverse to it, GBP CAD will go up, USD CAD will go up. You see what I'm saying? So is there anything, is it, every time I, take a, I think about Forex, it's trading. Mm-hmm. Uh, like day trading, or I've heard you could even swing trade it. Mm-hmm. I've never heard anybody talking about long-term hold. Can you long-term invest? Yes, in, does that does it, does, it, does it make sense to do that? It just depends. It depends because there's so much. It depends on what currency you're trading also. Mm-hmm. It's so much volatility that occurs in the foreign exchange market that a lot of people like for it because you can make an immensable amount of money at on a short-term basis, but you have to know the skill set in order to do it. That's a fact. Yeah. So how like, how how long are you holding your position? Just intraday? It Did, just depends. No, no, no. On average. No. Like what's the longest that you hold? No more than a week. No more than a week. Mm-hmm. So I'm in three to five days at max. Short term swing trading. Mm-hmm. What's the what's the rate of returns that you look for? Listen, they they they're immensable. <laughs> <laughs> Like no, what's just, what's the average? Like what's no, the average for you? But it depends. It depends on what's happening in the economy because this is the thing. Last week, where, last week, what was your rate of returns last week? But I can't do it like this. Let me tell you why I'm saying I can't do it like this because it's not just based off of the amount of money that you're putting up. You can have a hundred thousand dollars in your account and let's say make twelve thousand that week, right? That is because it's based off of the lot size that you place on that position, opposed to in stock where you say like I'm I'm turning this, I'm looking for a 50% return on this or 20% or 8% return on this. It's not like that in Forex because you're, you're placing, think of it as futures to a certain extent. Okay. So, so the the lot size, so like what you're saying in a sense is like, all right, when I'm trading stocks, if I get a 20% return, that might be my, my exit out of the position or 
I might let it go Yes. Over. So you have a goal right. that day that you're trying to make. So typically on, I would say on an every week basis, I try to shoot for like 20 to 30%. But this is the thing. It just depends on what's happening that week also. Yeah. Because if it's not something that I really like, Jackson Hole Symposium, I made 80%. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you said, Ian said, uh, the go all lit or whatever. Go like. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, like it depends on what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm just doing my regular day to day trades, I'm looking at 20, 30 to 30 percent because I understand, OK, one, I I'm a very disciplined trader, first off. So even when I reach my goal, I'm out like I'm not trying to go be like my goal is 80 percent literally over. Like I would say it just depends. I actually have all my goals written. On the back of my phone. <laughs> no, does. for real. No, yeah, yeah. Like, I saw, I saw like, you looking at it earlier. Like that, like seriously. What, what, what's a, a lot size? I heard you say that. What's a lot? You said it depends on the lot size. What's that exactly? A lot size is how much you're willing to put up per trade. So if you have a $100,000 account and you say, I want to make 20. Okay. So the market moves in pips. Pips. That's futures too, right? Same thing, right? Yeah. It, yeah it's very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the market moves in pips, right? So a lot size is based off of that move. That's why when you ask me that question of like, what's on average, what are you looking at? It just depends on like, <sighs> okay. So in forest, even when I market my student for my students on Sundays, I will say, okay, this is the short term move. We have major and minor structure. Minor structure is the right now money. Major structure is the play for the week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you already know that trades it is volatile. So this is going to happen right now. Then price is going to pull back. And then this longer term play is what you need to catch for the overall move. Right okay. now, if I understand that on this shorter term move, because I know it's not that much in regards to pips, it could be 50 pips. So 50 pips is like, um, it's a unit of measurement. So think about if you say you want to go outside and you want to go run. If you say I'm about to go run three miles, you just told me how far you're going to run in the market. A pip is a unit of measurement. So if the market pushes 100 pips and I trade a dollar per pip and you trade $5 per pip, you now have $100. You now have $500. Or oh, oh, you no, know in futures is ticks. That's what it was. It's like how many ticks does it move? Yeah, so yeah. it's a similar yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Now, you, you, you said something about being a disciplined trader. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times we talk about how sports, and Shadi talks about it a lot, about how sports helped him in certain ways about in, in life. And you said that boxing was what caused you to be such a disciplined trader. What are some of those attributes that you took from boxing that helped you in this trading platform? Well, first off, managing my money and understanding that once I reach this point, I'm not going to be greedy. That's first off. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a very, very disciplined person. Like when it came to my eating, when it came to me just waking up and working out, nobody ever had to do, get me to do that, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to trading, you always have to make sure that you are, the best way to say it is literally dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Like some people, because it's money and money is so accessible, especially in the foreign exchange market, they place trades without doing their due diligence to see if that's a good trade that they should be in or not. Mm -hmm. So somebody could just place a posi position without like adequately researching that position. Um, mm -hmm. Some people don't wake up for the session that they're trying to trade. Like it's so many different things, but ultimately boxing made me who I am in regards to even learning this skill set, trading is hard. Like, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But because I'm such a disciplined person, I was willing to go through the fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now it's at the point where, I, I mean, you should never tell somebody that you don't lose. Like, I'm not about to be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You don't lose. But at the end of the day, when you understand your craft mm -hmm. and you understand everything surrounding it and what makes the market move. Some people just be like, oh, I'm a trader, but they can't even tell me, okay, what's happening with our economy right now? Break it down for me. Tell me what's happening. If you don't understand fundamentally what is moving price, how can you call yourself a trader? You can't just say, oh, this is a level of support. This is a level of resistance. Buy here, sell here. Or the RSI is overbought or oversold, so you should place a buy. No, because it, it could keep going down. This you know true. what I'm saying? I think that's what what, what was caught my attention was because I saw so many young people involved and their perception of it was like, it's easy money. I can make money very easily without having the proper education for young people. What are some of the skill sets that you, you would say that are mandatory if they're going to get into this space? One learning fundamental analysis, 
a lot of people don't like to read. You can't you can't learn fundamentals without reading. <laughs> like reading is fundamental. <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. Like you can't learn fundamental analysis without reading. Now I will say that if you're a very technical sound trader, I have friends that are great technical traders, but you're gonna lose a lot of money before you're consistently profitable. And that's a fact. Why is that? Because you don't you don't have anything to guide you. So in trading, you have the literally the opposites of hope and fear. Some people, especially in, in Forex, right, they have anxiety in a market. As soon as it turns blue, they're like, oh, let me let me swipe this over, close this position up. And they they don't really understand how it works. Like psychologically, right? A lot of people are fearful when they're in profit that their profits are just going to go away or something like that. So they'll close out their positions. But when they're in losing trades, they hold them and they're hopeful that they're going to turn around, but they never even had the the adequate like reasonings or the reasons to be in this trade in the first place. Mm. You sure. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, that's a main thing. You got to master psychology. And that's how like discipline helped me. You know what I'm saying? You got to master your psychology. Psychology is everything in the market. You cannot be a trader without having proper psychology. So what are, what are spreads on trades? A spread is literally where... Um, how, what's the best way to explain this? A spread is where... The best way I can explain it is where a broker will literally increase a spread for them to make money. Bid and ass. Bid and ass. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so in, in a sense... We we talk about it like it's a car, right? Mm -hmm. The asking price is what you're going when you walk into a dealership. Mm -hmm. That's what they're telling you, you got to pay for mm -hmm. it. Your bid is what you're saying that you're willing to pay yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. That difference in between is where mm -hmm. the brokerage is usually going to yeah, make yeah. money. Yeah. So the similar. So yeah. So they make they make their money off of spreads. Brokers make their money off of spreads and deposits. Mm. Period. And it could be either variable or fixed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would assume but, that the fix is the better way. But this is the thing. When it comes to spreads and forex, your trading times are increased spreads. So explain that. Yeah. So when you are in high volume trading sessions, gotcha. as soon as the market opens, especially on Sunday, Sunday is literally where Sydney session opens at 5 p.m. our time. So we can trade at 5 p.m. Right, right, our right. time yeah, on, yeah, Sundays, yeah. on Sundays, right? Yeah. But that's 8 a.m. their time, right. right? So that's when the first like trading session begins. As soon as Sunday hits, the spreads are... And then they gradually go back in or they gradually So what? So what's, what's the best time to trade? Um, New York session or London session. What time is that? But also, it's just New York session is literally 8 a.m. Eastern mm -hmm. Standard Time, okay. Mm -hmm. And then 3 a.m. That's London. London, London session is 3, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Eastern mm -hmm. Standard Time. Mm -hmm. Those are the best times to trade. Yes, but this is the thing. Also, it depends on what type of trader you are and how good you are. If you're somebody that is not a good trader and you like slower trades, then you might think Australian session is better. You know what I'm saying? Or right. Tokyo it's session. So it just, yeah, it's not as volatile at all. Yeah. Um, New York session and London session are the most volatile sessions. Hmm. Everybody's up trading. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's up trading, but also because they are such strong economies, that is where the most movement happens. So let's go to this. Since during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. What was I mean? What was the effect on on the forex market? I know what it was on obviously the stock market. Similar uh, impacts or no? Completely different. Yeah, talk about it. It was different because, okay, so first off, coronavirus affected everywhere, right. period, point blank. But from a forex perspective, like, okay, how can I explain this? From a forex perspective, every single economy was affected differently, right? Mm -hmm. So from a fundamental perspective, there was a lot of fear in the market. But when you understand your technicals and you're at certain levels that you understand, price still followed structure. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, keep Okay, going, great. Keep going. Okay, so price still follows structure. Mm -hmm. That's how. So we make money whether the market goes up or down. Like, if the market crashed tomorrow, that is... You remember when Mike was on stage and I asked him... I specifically asked him this question because, again, we trade gold in... Well, gold is a commodity. However, on a MetaTrader 4 platform, Forex traders trade gold. Okay? So I asked Mike, I said, hey... Right now, with all everything that's going on with the Taliban and Afghanistan, like Afghanistan literally sits on one trillion dollar worth of resources and precious metals. So how do you think gold is going to be affected? He was like, we're about to make a lot of money. 
Like you literally so. that that's that's the truth. Anything that happens, good or bad, will cause us to make money if you understand the skill set and if you under like if you have the proper knowledge, one, but also understand again your entries, your exits, like all of that. Okay. Um margin. Can you can you trade on margin with Forex? Mm-hmm. Just like all stocks? Of our, everything is leveraged positions. Okay. All of our positions are leveraged. All of your positions? So you can't just, you have to use margin? Yeah. Mm. Explain that. All of our positions are leveraged. So ultimately, if we place a trade, like even banks, when banks trade in the foreign exchange market, they literally hedge their positions to mitigate risk, but they're using margin to do so. In the foreign exchange market, we use leverage on every position. Like it's... Is is that like like danger? I know like in, in the market stock market. Yeah, it's like definitely it's dangerous, dangerous if you don't do. know what you're doing. That's why a lot of people say force is a scam and they lose all their money, but that's because they don't have proper education. You so, gotta learn how to do it. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that people make in Forex? Um, getting out there too soon. Not not having proper knowledge. All right, because Forex is something that I would say is well, we all know it's been around for centuries, right. but because it's the market with the least barriers and entry, which mean they, which means that like an options contract, a good options contract, somebody cannot come in with a good options contract with no less than two thousand dollars for a good one, right? Now, if they come in with a good options contract, let's say that they do all their research or whatever case may be, they're not putting up two thousand dollars unless they do their research. In the foreign exchange market, you got people getting in with a hundred dollars, a hundred and fifty dollars, three hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like you say, kids playing in the market, like, oh, it's a video game, buy, sell, buy, sell. Like, right. no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the main thing that I could say is not having proper knowledge. Like that's the biggest mistake. Yeah, I but so that's good for the people, but you also said that you failed when you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for what, sure. what were the, the biggest I lost lessons? over a hundred thousand dollars. I literally lost my entire savings account and I was depressed. <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> Let's not skip that part. <laughs> it was it was nothing but the grace of God. Like I'm telling you, like I literally knew that it was real, and I was like, God, like I need. Like I remember crying in the middle of the floor. I fasted for 21 days. Was in a prayer closet. Slept in my prayer closet. Like I'm talking about journaled. Like went on a strict like fast. Like because I'm like, this, this it's, during, I have a block. This is after you lost. Oh yeah, that was after I lost it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I had so a you, you did block. that to, to get the money back? No. <laughs> no. <Jesus>. No. No. <laughs> Jesus. No. No. She locked herself in the closet. No. <laughs> no, Human but it's sacrifice. real though. What kind of I mean, is this? But it's, it's the truth. <laughs> Human sacrifice. You see, you see they down in me all. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Right okay, okay. I didn't even know this part, but go ahead. You see so, they down in me right now. I'm, t- I'm coming out here trying to get a truth. <laughs> Hey, y'all pl- over here playing nah, nah, with me. It's so yeah, your yeah, God yeah. looking at y'all nah, right yeah, now. Like, y'all laughing at my baby. Nah, 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 nah. Just trying to get an understanding. That's, that's, that's my boy, right? God, y'all. Be honest, God, God's watching. God literally looking at y'all like y'all laughing at my baby right no, now? No, no, we never would. We never I, would. I need you to know. God, like, my baby. God, the, God, my baby. Wait on race. You didn't lose. You learned. So, like, I want to... Because there's a lot of people that are losing money. And so, I want you... Obviously, go through your experience because you're a seasoned trader now, and so I don't want them to go down this, the same route. I don't want them to end up in a closet. I don't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Not guys. trapped no, in a closet. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm trapped in a closet. <laughs> like, oh, no pun yeah. intended. All right. Oh, no, but like, so what are the things that you learned from that? Obviously. Okay, let me just go back. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. let me just go back. No, I did not sleep in the closet to say, hey, God, can you give me my, ba- my my money back if I make this sacrifice? No. But what I will say is that when you are in certain places and spaces in your life where you know that there's a void, you just have to do certain things to get closer to God and like really to hear from him, mm-hmm. to really even understand, is this your path? Because mm-hmm. regardless, if Forrest ain't my path, I ain't going to be successful at it, period. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, like right. God has an anointing on every single calling that you have in your life, even y'all doing this. You know how many people start past who who start podcasts, but they're not successful. Y'all have an anointing to do this. That's why it's skyrocketed in the way it's, in which it has. We appreciate that, Justin. Ernest, what's going on? Traditional universities are outdated and don't teach you how to become an entrepreneur. They just teach you how to become an employee. 
You go to school for four years and you leave with nothing but debt. But here at EYL University, our curriculum is much different. Our university teaches you real world skills that you can use to gain financial freedom right away. In traditional universities, you learn from professors that have never did what they teach, and they teach you how to become an employee. At our university, we use instructors that are currently successful in a specific field that they teach, and they teach you how to become an entrepreneur. For a limited time only, you can join EYL University for 25% off of the annual membership. Learn about stock credit, real estate, crypto, and more. Go to EYLUniversity.com right now and sign up to become an earner. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over there now. My life and Forex, my students have the testimonials that they do because I was anointed to do this. Mm. And I truly know and believe that because of how many people's lives I've changed in the process. So when it came to me fasting, I'm like, God, like, first off, is this even for me? You know what I'm saying? Like right, you, right. I, I wanted to hear from God. I think a lot of people don't believe that they can hear from God or have a conversation with him. Like God comes to me in my dreams. God comes to me like a God literally speaks to me. You know what I'm saying? On different things and different places and situations that is just like, should I be doing this or should I not? Am I following the money or is this my purpose? Mm. Is this something that you call me to do or am I just looking at everything else trying to figure out how I need to be financially stable? Like lead me to what it is that I need to do or who I need to be in order for me to literally manifest greatness. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's so powerful because a lot of people get that misconstrued. They'll, they're chasing the money and they forget that there's a purpose on their life, right? And so they just feel like since I'm making money, this must be the purpose. But a lot of times it's not. And so you see that happening, especially in... in in, in the business world where people will up and change careers because it wasn't my purpose. Right. You know what I mean? So that, that's powerful. That's a powerful testimony. So, like, when you lost 100000 what was the reason how you lost it? Just uneducated, trade, yeah, too risky, uneducated, gambling? Uneducated. And then once you, at that time, once you don't really understand why you're taking the losses and you keep doing the same thing, but also not managing your risk properly, and then staying in positions too long, again, hoping that it's going to turn around without the proper education for even, like, it's just so much that I know now that I didn't know then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just like, oh, okay, I got it. You know what I'm saying? It was that moment. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you, do you do you have stop losses in your trading? Yeah. What, yeah. What's your usual stop loss? Like 10%, 20%? No, 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 no. It's based off of structure. I think that's where you have the differences between Forex and... and um, Stocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I base all my stop losses off of structure. What's, what does that mean, structure? Um, last, whole, last high, last low in the market, depending on what time frame I'm trading. So you have different trends inside of you trends. You said last, last high and last low? Okay, okay, gotcha. Last low and last high based off of different trends that I'm trading. So... Mm -hmm. Of course, you have, and like I had mentioned um, in regards to like the Sunday calls that I do when I'm talking about major and minor structure, that minor structure is a structure that is inside of an overall structure, right? So if I'm trading minor structure, I'm not going to go past the last low on that minor structure because if that's the case, then your direction is wrong. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So you, pay, you base your stop loss off of technical analysis yes. off of... Previous lows and highs. Previous highs. Yeah. If it hits that previous low, it's, it automatically sells it. Yeah, because if it hits that high, it sells it. Is that correct? Not if it hits the low, it sells it. Because we we take profit opposed to sales. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like we we place buys, we place sales, but when we close out, we just hit take profit. You see what I'm saying? But like if it goes, if it doesn't go as expected, and it starts to like it closes out. Completely. What, what closes it out? It hitting your stop loss. That's what I'm saying. The stop loss is based off of a previous low. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot here. But I want to talk about your superpower. And that's being one of, one of your superpowers because I think you're an amazing human being. But uh, it's being a woman trader. Um, mm -hmm. And shout out to Ad Invest Fest. Uh, Ryan Leslie talked about the power of women traders and how they're more rational, more disciplined, more measured. Now that you're actually teaching it, are you noticing that at that pattern as well with your students? And can you talk to that? Um, I, okay. So yes and no. In regards to my students, I think that it is, I have some amazing students. Okay. I got this lady named Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara 65. She literally make about 10000 a week. 
Okay, Miss Barbara said pretty. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Barbara. Webber, Shout yeah. out to Miss Barbara because I love me some Miss Barbara. Okay? Totally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love me some Miss Barbara. I will say my older women students are. Mm. I have some that are in their 20s, 30s that are not as disciplined as my older women students. But of course, I think that's life. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think that's like a, a life thing. Life experience. But then at the same time, I'm 28 and I'm super disciplined. So it's like, I can't really say it. I know me, okay? And I know I can't be outworked and I just got that mentality. When it comes to Ms. Barbara, I think Ms. Barbara and Angelica and all of these other students, like I have a student, her name's Angelica. She flipped literally, um, I think it was like $250 to 9100 in three weeks, right? Now- of course, the more your capital grows, you're going to be more conservative about your trades, which is why I say that 20, 30% a week, I'm good because the balance that I'm at, I don't like, I don't have a reason to risk like a lot, but I have a lot of students that will start an account with small amounts of money because if they start with a small amount and they turn it, like ultimately they don't have fear because they're, they know they're not losing this significant amount. Right. Of money. So Chantel is another one. She lives in Jamaica. Chantel, April of 2020, started her account with $250. In December, seven months later, she literally flipped it to $600,000 USD. Sounds Not like, Jamaican money. Yeah, it sounds like a Jamaican thing to do. Nah. <laughs> uh, no, no. Don't no, play no, Chantel. No, Chantel, no, no, no. he playing you. No, I'm Jamaican. <laughs> oh. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what we do. Uh, okay, that's okay, not okay. what we do. But. The psychology behind that is because I talked to all of them about it because I've never started an account with anything less than 5000 So the psychology behind theirs was if they lose it all, they only know they lost $250 and that's how they got over their fear. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's... I, w- I want to ask you a question. Taxes. How, how is taxes, speaking that you're dealing with foreign currency, mm-hmm. does that matter? Or is it just tax, just regular capital gains, American? It's, it's, it's tax, regular capital gains, American. Okay. Yeah, because anything that you put into your U.S. bank account is going to be taxed, just so, like U.S. dollars. But while it's in your, your foreign exchange accounts, like, I mean, technically. You know so, I mean, t- <laughs> typically, and that's a good question, it, it's, it's most predominantly short-term capital gains, right? So, they're going to pay the highest tax on it. Yeah, but nobody's this is doing a, past a year and a day. But this is the thing. We put our money, like, when we trade, we're still trading U.S. currency. All of our money is in U.S. dollars, mm-hmm. even though when we are trading it, we're trading against another currency, but it's still... In the U.S. dollars. Like, I can trade, let's say, something, GBP, JPY, Great British Pound versus Japanese Yen, but I'm not trading my U.S. dollars. My U.S. dollars is just trading that pair. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I got it. So, is (laughs) is this something... Oh, my fault. (laughs) Is this something that you... All right, so, do you think... In order to be a successful trader, how how many hours a day does it take? Because I know people that make a lot of money trading, whether it's Forex, crypto, stocks, whatever. Um, do you have to sit in front of your computer all day? What's the time frame? How many hours a day do you have to be dedicated to do this? Once you learn a skill set, I just mark up all my charts on Sundays and set my alerts. And when price gets to where I need it to go, it's going to alert me. And that's when I place my trades. So how many hours a day? Not even one. Yeah, so you like so you're like it's automated for you at this point. Yeah. Sunday you set the trades. Sunday I mark up. Sunday I will probably spend about two hours analyzing everything I need to learn. I mean analyzing everything I need to analyze. I mark up all the pairs that I'm gonna trade for the week. Yeah. All right. Then when the market is open, I'm not just staring at the charts waiting for price to get to where I want it to go. I set an alert. And then the alert notifies me when price is there. At that point, I'm gonna look to see, okay. Is this doing my breaking retest? Make sure I got all my I's dotted and my T's crossed, and then I place the trade. Now, from a fundamental perspective, I research like, but I'm not really just staring at my charts. I'm just like always abreast to what's happening because that's my craft. Okay, um, because yeah, I know people that you know are doing this all day, so I was interested to know. I think that those are scalpers, though. So. Mm-hmm. 
in trading, where we talked about where you just asked me, like, do you have like position traders? So you have scalpers, you have intraday, you have swing traders, and then you have position. Okay. So the scalpers are the ones that literally wake up and say, okay, let me look at the candlestick. Okay. There's a lot of volume in here. Let me place a buy. Let me catch 10 pips. All right. I'm about to close it out and let me move on. And now I want to place these trades. And then they end up placing like 70, 80 trades in a day. No, no. Great traders. You only need really two, three trades a week to make your week. And it will be a beautiful week. Some you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some who are position traders, like I'm not a position trader. I don't even really consider myself a swing trader because the thing is, is when I say like, okay, I'll hold a trade, let's say sometimes three days, it's because sometimes a trade can be in consolidation before the move actually happens. So I could get in at the top of that consolidation where I still don't go in drawdown while the market is moving. It's just moving in that consolidation up until the point where it hits my TP. I entered a trade on Sunday. It closed out this morning. You see what I'm saying? But that's because that great British pound, it had pushed down a little bit going into Monday morning. It hit my minor structure. It consolidated a little bit. And then this morning it fell some more. And then automatically we out. Yeah. It hit my take profit. Like, I don't even have to look at it for it to take profit, though. Yeah. The most people that, like, stare at their charts 24-7, they're the ones that's literally, like, scalping and, like, just looking at volume and just pressing by or sell based off of the volume that's occurring in that moment, opposed to really understanding the, you know what I'm saying? The monetary ecosystem of what's happening. So at this level, I mean, and I'm sure you had some mentors along the way. Mm -hmm. What was that process like of seeking them and finding a trusted one? Y'all gonna laugh when I say this, but it was God. Like, think about this. Even me meeting y'all, even this whole InvestFest thing, it was nothing but God. Like, I didn't say, hey, God, like, you know what I'm saying? Even me meeting Michael. I literally just so happened to be at an event. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out to Michael. Shout, yeah, I just so me. happened to be at an event. <laughs> Talk to Michael. Then literally even before InvestFest, like, I was like, dang, I want to speak at InvestFest, but it was just a thought. I literally was dreaming, and then I was on stage at InvestFest. <laughs> then... <laughs> This is true. I'm serious. True. Dreams you know come saying? true. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, y'all sarcastic. No, no. Welcome to you. Okay. Dreams come true. But, uh, no, but for real. real though, like my mentors, I, I truly believe that everybody in, that is in my life happens because God puts them there and they are supposed to be a part of my path and they are supposed to be a part of my anointing. If not, like I don't force relationships. I don't force friendships. I don't try to meet people. Mm -hmm. Whoever is supposed to be in my life for the calling which God has for me on this earth is going to be there. So the mentors that I have, mm -hmm. one of them, I don't even know how I found him. Like, I really don't. Yeah. He came to me. Like, I legit manifested it. Hey, man. So how would you get into the um, teaching? And we'll talk about your platform that you have where you're actually educating people. Because this is one of these things that it's like a lot of times, I get this question a lot, like in my financial planning calls, where it's like people want to, um, they got the long-term investing, they got that, but they want to try to find a way to supplement their income. Mm -hmm. And they want to make money mm -hmm. through investing. And it's like, you, it's hard to really make money through investing with long-term. Unless mm -hmm. you have a lot, a lot of money, then you can have dividends, but you got to have a lot of money mm -hmm. just to live off of dividends. So it's like, you know, sometimes that's why people go into like the short term options of the world mm -hmm. or futures, mm -hmm. Forex trading. So this is a way where people actually can make, you know, money, mm -hmm. theoretically, $1,000 a day, 2000 whatever, you know, whatever your skill set is, whatever you can do. So this is something that I understand why people are interested in this because it allows you a form of cash flow mm -hmm. through investing outside of the long term. So how did you get into teaching this and what is what does that look like as far as like you building out your platform? What did what do you teach your your, your students? Like what's that include? Yeah, so how I got into teaching was I just wanted to travel and trade. Once I got through like the fire and learned it, I was consistently profitable. I would say April 2019 was when I started seeing big profits. Like because your forage journey, I was trading for five years, but that don't mean you profitable for five years. You were in your learning process. So April 2019, I that was when I first made January, February, March was when I started first making my profits. April, I went to Thailand for two months. And I was like, I'm just going to travel and trade. Like, that was it. And then one of my friends hit me up. He was like, you know, God didn't give you the skills there to keep it to yourself. Mm. And then I was like, 
okay, whatever. I just kept traveling. <laughs> like, for real, I went to Malaysia. I went to Singapore. It was beautiful. And then he hit me up again. And he was like, he did this free Monday night call. He was like, he taught Mondays and Thursdays. He was like, I want you to take over Mondays. I don't want to do that. I don't want. I didn't want the headache of people. Mm-hmm. Like that might sound so terrible to say, but I really just didn't want the headache of people. So I was like, no, I just want to travel and trade. I kept doing it, and then it just kept replaying in my head. And then I had called him back probably like a month and a half later, and I was like, all right, I'll do it. So June, June going into well, really June, I had started teaching. I just started doing this free call on Mondays. And then this lady was like, I want you to be my private mentor. Her name was, um, dang, Maria. She was my first student. I was like, girl, me? What? No, not me. Like, it's okay. Just keep hopping on the calls. You'll learn. She was like, no, I'm serious. And then that was August 2019. Then I got Maria to the point where she was able to retire herself and her mom. Mm. And then I was like, dang. And then people kept asking me, can you just teach? Can you just teach? And then that's when I started doing it. And so I had this 12-week long course where literally I take them through how to be profitable. In my course, none of my students start from scratch. It's so crazy because I didn't even leverage my social media following because I felt like people off of Instagram just wanted get-rich-quick money. I didn't want nobody from Instagram. So they literally had a process. They had to hop on my Sunday calls first, my Sunday and Monday calls first before they could even be accepted as a student. Mm. Then they had to go through this whole like testing portion. Most students that I have, they lost like over $50,000 before I started teaching them. 20000 like they just was through the fire, but they understood the basis. And then I just make them profitable. So like what are some of the things that you you teach? Um, structure is one of the main things because a lot of people don't realize in Forex, trading is not a strategy, it's structure. Some people have like a London breakout strategy where they'll be like, oh, press a buy stop and a sell stop. And when London session opens, it's going to shoot up and whichever one goes, like whichever one turns blue, close it out. No, that's not, that's not trading. Some people will be like, oh, when SMA cross the EMA, literally carry it 20 pips and then close out. Like, that's that's all these different strategies, but strategies will always fail you if you don't understand structure in the economy. So literally, I teach structure in my course. The second assignment is the, literally the hardest, but I teach you how to literally read the market. Read, you need to be able to read the market like the back of your hand. Like, I know what's going to happen based off of seeing it. You see it. Yeah. And and it's one of these things. Like the more you, skill, not the, skill. the more you do it, the more you, the more yeah. you become. It's like anything. It's like riding a bike. Um, and then I guess you you have like different strategies as far as like technical analysis and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's crazy because one of my friends actually was at InvestFest, InvestFest, and uh, he met somebody, and they was. Long story short, he gave him like five hundred dollars to invest for him in forex and, and uh, crypto, like a combination of forex and crypto. And I was with him yesterday, so it was like a week later, and he was like at twenty eight hundred. He's like, I don't know what he's doing. He's like, hopefully it's not a scam. He's like, boy, they showing it to me and da-da-da-da. He was like, so he was real excited about it. So literally, mm-hmm. we just had that conversation yesterday. So, yes, if anybody's interested, I believe the website, is, and once again, if you watch EYL, you know that any program that, you know, we uh, have on our show that, you know, we let people promote on our show, one of the stipulations is that we always have to have a discount for the earners. It's something that we are very passionate about. We feel like, you know, um, we always support business, especially black business and education. As Nas said, I invest in education because we wasn't privy. So I always, I personally invest in my education. I buy a bunch of courses. I've been very vocal about that. And I support the entrepreneurs in the online space to have courses. I feel like it's just a fraction of what you would pay if you go to Harvard or Yale or any of these institutions. And um, it's something that you can implement right away as opposed to getting $60,000 of student loans and having to wait, you know, four years to try to get a job. And then, you know, you can't get a job and I can go on a whole rant about that. So I'm very, very big in the online education space. But um, like I said, anybody that we have on that has a, a course or program, we always try to have the cheapest price on the market for that. So Jessica uh, obliged to that. So she took $500 <laughs> off of her program. And this is 
the only place where it is discounted on this price. So it's the cheapest place on the market that you can actually buy the program. And the website is just J E S S invest E Y L.com. That is just J E S S invest E Y L.com. If you want that special promo uh, for all the earners, $500 off of the program, which will teach you how to get up and running and make a profit um trading forex all of the information that you need to know you can go there uh, once again thank you for doing that i appreciate it absolutely yeah yeah for sure so um what's next what's next for you what's what's the on the vision board um what's your plans on scaling business anything else i'm gonna own a hedge fund mm. that's next remember the face remember the name period just <laughs> <laughs> nah for real i'm gonna own a hedge fund like, even when you ask about mentors, even Mike coming into my life, like, that, I mean, him and my mentor for years, but, like, it, it's, I don't know, I can't even explain it. It's God, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, shout out to Mike, Mike Sims, and that's, a, we've had conversations about that, um, mm -hmm. and so, we gotta make this happen. We gonna make it happen. Mike, but, Mike, yeah, good dude. Solid. Yeah, for sure. So, the hedge fund's definitely on the list. Yeah, I'm definitely okay. on the hedge fund. I'm gonna be the richest woman in America. I'm gonna be the Warren Buffett of women, and I know it. It's already happening. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Anything else outside of that? Um, so I'm building a school in Africa. I'm super excited Whoa, about time it. Out, time out. Don't oh, just gloss wait. over it. Okay. Like that's big. I'm building a school in Africa. <laughs> Talk about that. Okay. I'm building a school in Africa. No, <laughs> please don't do that. <laughs> you gotta piece that in. Um, no, nah. so I'm building a school in Africa. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of people that need it there. Their poverty is not like our poverty. I feel like our poverty, not to say it's by choice, but the, implica the implications of colonialism is just real, real. All right. Mm -hmm. And we talking about, I know here, and I went to Spelman, so I studied literally like African diaspora, all of that. Right. But we have it better off here, even after slavery, even with racism, than they do there. Mm -hmm. And that is terrible to me. So and during your traveling and trade times when you were traveling, this is yeah, this yeah, is yeah. What so you I was just it? yeah. So I was in Africa and I realized um, how many people. Well, really, I did an event in Africa. It's so crazy. Trap said he was going to Africa, and I was like, I want to go to Africa. And I swear I manifested it. It's so crazy. This person hit me up and was like, Hey, I want you to do an event in Africa. A week later, I did the event. I met a whole bunch of people. I really realized how real, real, real poor people were. And then I was like, oh, I got to build a school here. And that's how it happened. Dope. Powerful. What's the name of the school going to be? I don't know. I ain't decided yet. All right. All right. It's going to be, what, what, what grade is it going to be? It is going, it's a financial literacy school. Oh, wow. So it's not grades. To anybody? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dope. It's a financial literacy school. I'm inspired. Dope. Dope. There it goes. People who say that usually do it because they believe it. That's a fact. How That's can people fact. follow you, social media, your website, all that information? Yeah, it's Jessica Lane, I-T-S-J-E-S-S-I-C-A-L-A-I-N-E. It's Jessica Lane. Yep. Troy, housekeeping items? Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. Yeah, that's our Proud to Pay program. Shout out to Akeem. He's a new Tier 5 member, has access to EYL University. The number one place for everything in the business world and entrepreneur world. Um, is there so shout out to over the 10,000 earners that we have there they are killing it uh, shout out to everybody on the merch team uh, and shout out to everybody that's been supporting the merch man we got some new flavors up there for y'all uh, so make sure y'all keep supporting uh, we're gonna keep dropping heat for y'all so love is love yeah and invest fest if you're interested in looking at the replay for invest fest you can go to investfest.com and you can get the replay and then also you can get your tickets for next year we're going to do even bigger next year so we got a lot, lot planned you know, for Invest Fest. Let's go bigger, go bigger. That's a fact. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. That's Period. a fact. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>